Juvenile Justice, Public Education, and First Generation Initiatives is now called to order. Today is Thursday, May 21, 2015, and the time is 2.36 p.m. And our agenda is Bill Number 6933-COR, introduced by Senator Rory Respicio, which is an act to amend subsection 715, item Item 12, subsection M of Chapter 7, Title 1, Guam Code Annotated. Relative to the Guam Public School System's use of Easter and Christmas breaks as makeup days in the school ca calendar. Notices for this public hearing were disseminated via hand delivery and uh, emailed to all centers and all main media broadcasting outlets on May 14, 2015 to meet the five-day notice requirement and again on May 19, 2015 for the 48-hour notice. I'd like to first of all acknowledge um, our speaker, Speaker uh, Judy Wampat, thank you very much, and she's also the vice chair of uh, the Committee on Education. Um, and we also have um, uh, Senator Rora Respicio, who is the, the main sponsor of the bill. And we have um, major Minority Leader. <laughs> minority Leader, <laughs> Tony Adams. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's right. You can always join over. Okay, so, um, and I thank you, my dear colleagues, for joining us. I would like to um, uh, ask us, uh, Senator, Senator Respicio, to please uh, say a few words regarding the, the bill. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair, and uh, thank you also for co-sponsoring uh, this bill. You know, when Senator Underwood and I uh, first discussed the idea of providing more regularity in the planning process for parents and students of parents and teachers and in the use of Easter and Christmas breaks, we really did talk about whether or not this would usurp the authority of the board. And both Senator Underwood and I, uh, and through her guidance, said that the 180 days was established by statute. So any revisits to that 180-day policy would have to be done by statute. So this is something that the board can't do on their own, even if they would like to. And so, of course, the initial reaction from some in the community was that this bill usurps the authority of the superintendent and the Board of Education, and, and that was not our intent um, at all. Then I attended a work session uh, at the request of the superintendent and also the chair and, and the chairman of the Board of Education, and Ms. Tina Tungle was named to be the chair of the school um, calendar committee. And that was a very uh, productive uh, work session where the board, uh, Madam Chair, Speaker, and Senator Atta, uh realized uh, that this bill is needed in order for them to provide for the makeup days. And there was an, a concurrence that um, the use of Easter and Christmas breaks would not have to be used if the legislature was amenable to an amendment that they had proposed. And so I, I have prepared a sponsor statement, but I've also, in the interest of um, good faith and in working with the board, Madam Chair, I'm submitting to you officially uh, an amended uh, version that we can generate some discussions and get concurrence, uh, continued concurrence from the board and the superintendent. But thank you, Madam Chair, for co-sponsoring this, but also I want to thank the superintendent and the board for really, uh, yeah, working, uh, for allowing us to work closely with you and for recognizing from the very beginning that this bill in no way uh, usurps your authority, but only uh, continued recognition by this legislature that we have to do whatever we can uh, to support uh, the work that you do uh, for all of our school kids. And so thank you for the opportunity to present the bill and thank you most especially for the public hearing. Okay. Well, thank you very much, uh, Senator Rusficio. I would like to call up those who had signed up. We have uh, Mr. Peter Atta, who is the chairman of the uh, Guam Education Board. We have uh, Ms. Rosie Tarantongo, who is also a board member. And we have Superintendent John Fernandez, as well as Deputy Superintendent Rob Malay.
Okay, so uh, we will begin. I'm just going to go down the line. Yes. Okay, so um, Chairman Adder. Thank you, Senator Underwood. Uh, thank you for giving us this opportunity to come before your committee to testify on the bill as introduced by uh, Senator Rospicio and yourself, and also uh, to you, Senator uh, Rospicio, uh, Madam Speaker, Vice Chairperson of this committee also. Thank you for giving us this opportunity. And to Senator Etta, thank you for joining us. With me this afternoon is uh, Ms. Rosie Tanitongo, who is appointed to be the chairperson of the calendar committee and who has met with the stakeholders when this legislation, uh, proposed legislation was brought into light. And uh, it was uh, reviewed by all the stakeholders. And Mrs. Uh, Tanitongo is here to present her, uh, her findings uh, based on the discussion. Uh, prior to that, during the works, uh, after that has been completed, we did ask, and I've also asked the superintendent to uh, give us his input, and he would like to share that also with you. And also, who was working hand in hand with this committee uh, is uh, Mr. Rob Millay, who probably might be his last vision into this uh, television set this afternoon, because the next time he will be acting as superintendent of a school district in New Hampshire. So again, congratulations, and thank you, Mr. Millay, for all that you have done. Um, anyway, at this time, may I ask Mrs. Tiny Tongo to um, present the stakeholders' um, discussion and meetings, and then the superintendent will give his position as it affects the operation of the department. Mrs. Tiny Tongo. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good afternoon. Senator Underwood, Speaker Wampat, Senator Rory Respicio, and Senator Tony Adam. Hello. Okay. I will go ahead and read our testimony, Senator. Okay. Honorable Senator, uh, Honorable Nerissa Britannia Underwood, Senator and Chairperson, Committee on Early Learning, Juvenile Justice, Public Education, and First Generation Initiatives. Half a day, Senator Underwood. We write on behalf of the Guam Education Board, GEB, to provide feedback on Bill 69-33, an act to amend Section 715, Item 12, Subsection M of Chapter 7, Title 1, Guam Code Annotated, relative to the Guam Public School System's use of Easter and Christmas breaks as makeup days in the school calendar. At no time did the GEB feel that the proposed legislation was an attempt to usurp its responsibility for setting the school calendar. But the legislation was viewed as a vehicle that will provide additional authority and flexibility while doing so. However, before deciding on a position, we wanted to ensure all board members had a full opportunity to discuss the proposed legislation. On Monday, April 13, 2015, the GEB held a work session in which the primary author of the bill, Senator Rory Respicio, attended. Subsequently, on April 21, 2015, during the GEB regular meeting, committee assignments were approved to include the chairperson of the calendar committee, Mrs. Rosie Tainatongo, acting in her capacity. Mrs. Tainatongo convened a work session on April 24, 2015, that included the Guam Federation of Teacher Pres Teachers President, Teachers and the Guam Department of Education, GDOE Management, inclusive of school administrators to discuss Bill 6933. The calendar committee agreed that using this, the scheduled school vacation to make up lost instructional days creates difficulties for stakeholders that have made their prior arrangements. Further, the committee recommend that there be further amendment to provide greater flexibility to the requirement that 180 instructional days be provided during the course of the school year. Thus, we present the following recommended amendments to the proposed legislation as agreed to by the GEB during our special meeting held on May 5th. May 5th excuse me. 
Number one, in the title of the bill, amend Guam Public School System to read Guam Department of Education. Number two, on the line 10 of page one, amend Guam Public School System to read Guam Department of Education. Item three, on line seven on, of page two, insert language to read subsection M at least one 180 instructional days and we're adding in or its equivalents, including makeup days each school year with school years ending no later than 30 days following the end of the calendar school year. Schedule Easter and Christmas breaks shall not be included in makeup days. And item one and two are recommended for consistency with the reference to the public school system. Item three is recommended to allow GDOE flexibility with regard to making up lost instructional days throughout the school year and best serve our public schools as a whole. Again, we thank you for this opportunity to provide you with our feedback and hope that we are able to make the necessary amendments to the existing language that will allow GDOE the, oper the operating flexibility in order to make up all lost instructional days during the approved scheduled school year. As the GEB and calendar committee chairperson, we are avail available to provide additional input as you deem appropriate. We, thank, we ask that the committee proceed to hold a public hearing on the legislation, and we ask that the legislature move expediously to approve Bill 69-33 as amended. It is important that a decision be made quickly so we can review the upcoming school year calendar and make the necessary adjustment and then inform the public as soon as possible of all changes. Sincerementi, Peter Alexis Ada, Chair Guam Education Board, Rosie Tainatongo, Chair Guam Education Board Calendar Committee. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Mrs. Tantongo. Um, and what we'll do is we'll just have everyone do, and then we'll ask questions later. If, yes. And now, the, oh. and now the superintendent will give his overview yes. of how it would affect the operation of the department. Thank you, superintendent. Thank you, Senator. Members of the committee, um, this will be really brief. As the as uh, Ms. Tanatongo uh, read the board's uh, uh, policy position on on this proposed uh, amendment, so uh, what I would say is that everything is driven by this. Uh, what's in the law, which at this point is a hundred day, hundred and eighty instructional day requirement, and, um, and so the flexibility that that we're proposing would you know, try to accomplish that the 180 days or its equivalents and give some flexibility to the department. And so we would be supportive of that, given um, knowing the intent of maximizing instruction, but also making sure we don't have uh, the calendar being very, you know, completely impacted by the by storms of, of, of and other uh, interruptions. I think second, um, the way I look, the way we look at the flexibility is that the board then would, with the guidance, would then set the calendar and the calendar being the first and the last day. Of, of the school year, and then within that calendar, um, the and, and the any identified makeup days, uh, consistent with the law, uh, I, the superintendent would then um, be tasked with ensuring that those that the 180 day or its equivalent uh, be rem be met. And so, uh, you know, as we go through that, as long as we have the parameters and the board's first and last day, then we can work through how we can ensure that the, that, that appropriate amount of instruction is provided. So there is a role for the legislature to set out that broad parameter, the board to identify when the, when the school year starts and ends and the makeup days that'll be identified. And then for the superintendent to make sure as we hit those interruptions that we are then adjusting to, uh, to account for, uh, for those requirements. And I think the third piece is just as uh, Ms. Tanatongo uh, uh, indicated, uh, because we approved the, our we, we approved the calendar um, last school year, and we approved it for two school years. And so, of course, we're heading into the beginning of the school year. We want to be able to apprise parents of what the uh, what the school year will look like. So, once the legislature, uh, if it decides to pass this um, this bill, uh, it would be helpful for the department. So then we can then uh, finalize a calendar for for our parents. So uh, that's that's all uh, I have to offer, and be happy to answer any questions. Okay. And now Mr. Millay, who was an integral part of this whole process, he might probably want to give you an inside info. Uh, 
Thank you, Mr. Ada, and thank you, Senators. I think I think both the superintendent and Ms. Tainatongo have really summarized everything that needs to be said. Um, you know, we appreciate the opportunity to provide our input. Uh, we thank Senator Respicio for coming to a work session, and sitting down, and working through the issues with us. Um, I think you have all of the information that that we have to offer at this time. So, appreciate the opportunity. Okay, well, um, I want to take the opportunity to go off script here, and, and I do want to thank you, Mr. Malay, for your service to the Guam Department of Education, and especially the past uh, few years, uh, this past few years when you had um, agreed to uh, provide assistance to our superintendent, and uh, I just know you've served not only as a teacher, but as assistant principal, principal, and uh, deputy superintendent as well as parents of, of children in our school system so uh, I just want to thank you for your service um, I do have a, uh, a question uh, and then I'll open it up I, I just need to have an example when you're talking about example uh, its equivalence because we're concerned about the quality and not only the quantity but the quality of, of um, instructional days and that we're actually meeting uh, the mission of our our um, our school so uh, can you give me an example of its equivalence what would be I mean basically uh, what we're looking at is um, first of all you know we understand the parameters that are set forth by the legislation right what we do right now is identify 180 days plus 10 potential makeup days and for historical purposes we've pretty much over the last three years used uh, I think a maximum of six makeup days of those 10 so they're set out through the year but we don't use them all it's just that we save some for the early part of the year and the and later part of the year so we have those available um, and so what, I, what we foresee and you know subject to the calendar committees um, review is setting that calendar at a reasonable start and end that we will probably build in uh, some of those days uh, as regular makeup days outside of the Christmas and Easter break uh, look at the possibility of other days uh, like such as our full our full uh, full professional development days so our full our full day uh, PD days we have two of those every year um, look at the possibility of, of, of maybe even uh, during our parent-teacher conference maybe half the day is instruction half the day parent-teacher conference just looking at options as one way to go about it or to look at additional time at the end of at the end of the school day uh, to equate to equate with what we consider six hours uh, for the elementary schools uh, so the six hour day in elementary schools and the seven hour day in, in high school so we would look at what days are available outside those days that we're you know prohibiting and then we would look at the uh, and this again subject to discussion with the calendar committee uh, look at um, the possibility of you know uh, latching on to our PD days or or even looking at instructional time being added um, in the year just to make sure that we don't go too far into June uh, or to or to need to take up the Eastern Christmas breaks as uh, as discussed okay I just needed to make sure that we clarify that um, uh, centers do you have any yes or I'm sorry the chairman Yes. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. I also want to thank the panel for their participation and uh, also go off script to uh, thank uh, Mr. Malay for not only his service to the Department of Education, but also his work uh, in this particular um, instance. I, I appreciate that discussion and I also want to generate uh, some discussion, Madam Chair, as uh, Mr. Malay pointed out. Uh, what happens in other jurisdictions is the students are not may not necessarily be required to physically come to school and the superintendent has mentioned this you could provide for some some written assignment and if a certain percentage of the school population uh, complies with that assignment then the board can deem that it's not necessary to provide for that makeup day and also the Guam Federation of uh, Teachers Union has provided written testimony uh, in support of the bill with um, four different points that they like to stress and and I think what the, the most uh, salient point to make is that this bill as amended and it passed and signed into law will conform to what they do throughout the United States where the board now can have some days outside of the uh, school calendar 
uh, X number of days so that parents know that the school will never exceed, if, if June 15 is the final makeup day, they know for sure that they can schedule their off-island vacation plans on June 16 and they're never going to exceed that, for example. Mm -hmm. However, if they don't need all the makeup days, so you, like what the, some of the jurisdictions do, they cross off June 15, they don't need June 14, they don't need June 13, so the kids will actually be let out earlier than, mm -hmm. than what the board has said to be the 100 instructional days or its equivalents. The other thing I wanted to say for the record is um, Dr. Cruz also made a good point in the work session that he questioned why students are required to do the makeup days when the grades have already been submitted. So in this case, uh, Madam Chair, if the grades have already been submitted and then the board, uh, I guess through the recommendation of the superintendent, deems that those makeup days are not necessary, then this bill will provide for that flexibility. And I think that's what we're talking about here, right? Is are we just bringing the students in because it's quantity and we know what happens during makeup days because the teachers can't really plan for a, a, at least a decent majority of students to attend, so they schedule movie days or some some kind of uh, activity that will not disrupt the instructional class time. So I also appreciate the challenges the teachers are faced with in having to provide for makeup days. But bottom line is. Uh, people just want to, and as the board pointed out in their testimony, they want regularity in the planning of how these makeup days are done. And in this last um, spring break, uh, students came in for the first day, which was already an assigned makeup day, and then Orta Elementary School didn't have water, so they had to come in the following day. So mm -hmm. you can imagine the amount of uh, mm -hmm. frustration and uh, pushback mm -hmm. that that, but mm -hmm. the board's hands are tied in this case, so this bill would actually the point is they'll give you more authority. Uh, so thank you. And I, um, again, thank you, Mr. Malay, for your service and superintendent for your guidance because we, you know, did talk about the ramifications and also potential budgetary impacts if, if, um, if you would have to extend a makeup day, um, right, and mm -hmm. what that would do, so, okay. okay. Thank you, Senator. Do we have uh, Speaker Wanpan? Thank you very much um, for this opportunity to share my thoughts and to also ask you some questions. Uh, but I'll ask my questions first and then I'll share some things. Um, then I'm glad the question, of course, of equivalency was answered because that was um, my question initially. I, I want to ask a question on M, of course, where it starts out where it says, at least at least 180 instructional days and how do you read the at least is it the floor of 180 days or it can go up to can it be beyond what is your interpretation of, of the at least Well, a speaker, I, I think the 180 days will be, that's the bottom line, but we can go higher if we need to. So, but um, I know that uh, altogether, with the 10 makeup days, our schedule is 196 days. Okay. okay but so at least you're saying the floor is, is The floor is 180. Okay. Yes. All right. That, that, um, thank you for answering that question. Now, there was a situation, and there, and I know you were there, Rosie, I'm sure, Rob, you may there be there too as well, where we had to make up some days, and the teachers were, supposed, the teachers were already on salary, but we didn't start school but much later, and now we're faced, of course, of having to pay. Uh, and I want to make sure, because you're right, there is that, you know, uh, board union uh, with the contract and the agreement, a calendar committee to decide on the calendar year, and it's not just the year, it's two years. And should you deviate from that, then of course it may mean paying, having to pay for the additional days. Now we know that we are still, uh, even though it's not official in terms of what the court has uh, decided and how much is actually owed, uh, there's that question still looming, you know, in terms of the debt 
owed, you see, to uh, the teachers for that time. And I want to make sure that when you decide and agree on a calendar, or calendars, got two calendar years, then is that we, you, you would not run into that problem with this particular language. May I comment, uh, Ms. Madam Speaker? Uh, that's, I was waiting, I was going to make it as a closing remark, but since you brought up the topic, and that's exactly the reason why we are hoping and praying that this legislature will expedite this so that we can immediately uh, get back to committee so that they can work on the schedule so that uh, we, there'll be no surprises to the teachers. You know, they're, they're, they're making plans. Right now, they're going to be, some of them are going off island and they're, they want to, some of them, some of them are paying a round trip for, you know, within the year. And we want to make sure that we have an end date that they can, they can plan for. This proposal that we come forth with gives us that flexibility to work with. And uh, we'll take, if we don't need it, we keep subtracting. Thank you. So the, you said that two years have been approved. For what school years are those for? The, it was the, it's the current school year that we are in and next school year so has already next, been approved. So for next school year, it's already approved. It has been. As your start date and your end date. Correct. Yes, ma'am. Now, and then that brings me now to my two new questions then. One is, of course, the urgency to do it now. But since you've already agreed on it, and we're going to pass this law, it would definitely change what you've already agreed for that school calendar year. Yes. Correct. And what we would have to do is we'd have to remove those flexible makeup days out of the Christmas, the Easter break okay. that are currently on the, the calendar for 15, 16. Okay. And, and we would want to give that guidance to teachers now so they could make whatever plans and families can make whatever plans they need to make for those time periods, yes. So then, that, then this takes us to the next question because we've come to the tri-board for FESPAC for next year where we need to have, of course, the schools and school children and everybody in the community available for the last week of May and the first week of June, which, of course, cuts into your school calendar year and graduation. So what is the decision on that? And would that also change now as a result of, let's say, this, you know, be, this bill uh, passing on time? Right. So... For the next school year, yes. For, well, actually, this coming school year. Right. So in addition to just gen addressing the general policy issues around the instructional days and makeup days, um, if getting this passed now will, it give, will give us an opportunity to get back to the table uh, to address this and to incorporate all of the latest planning uh, uh, all the latest planning going into the FESPAC. So what we're trying to do is nail down all those details and we'll want to get that done in time to be able to plan out the, the coming school year, knowing that there will be um, you know, a lot of activities going on uh, before our school year is ended. So the calendar committee then would be agreeable that if there are, if this is passed, that there won't be any repercussions in terms of coming back to the government, suing the government because this is when we're supposed to go in, because this is what we agreed on, and this is when we're supposed to get out. I just want to make sure that we don't find ourselves in that same situation. Right. So the board, the, under this, under this, uh, the current law and under the uh, proposed uh, bill, the board continues to maintain the final say on setting the calendar. Uh, the calendar committee um, officially you know, meets to make recommendations to the board, and then the board can come back and, and adjust it. Now, given what's happened uh, in the past and the liability that we've been exposed to, I've, been, I've made sure to ensure that legal counsel is always present, especially with to, to understand whether there are implications so that we do not uh, run into any issues. The, the issue of this 180 days or its equivalence gives us a lot of flexibility to be creative, especially about the, with upcoming FESPAC activity. So I think that's going to be very helpful in, in avoiding uh, those issues that we're raising today. You know, I think what you were referring to before is the um, South Pacific Games, right? And so what this, what this does is it does give us that flexibility so that we don't run into that type of a circumstance mm -hmm. again. Um, 
you know, we currently allow teachers to have the option of the number of pay periods that they're going to be paid over, whether it's 21 pay periods or 26. And that 21 uh, pay option kind of limits our, our, our options, you know, but with, a, with the language that's being proposed, that kind of expands the flexibility that we would have to not run into those situations. Uh, okay. I mean, I like to say, though, of course, that I, I love the idea of, you know, giving the board the flexibility to make some of these decisions because it wasn't, uh, it's not an easy thing, of course, when you're locked in by uh, a calendar. Now, the, I'd like to, to share, of course, because when I was a school principal, and I know some people have told me don't go back to those uh, times again. But I have to share this because I've actually had gone to the board, not you guys, but your former board members, where I wanted to pilot a program, the true middle school concept. And in order to do that, I needed to make sure my teachers were trained. And I asked the board that once a month, no, none of our school children would come to school and we would train our teachers for that whole day. Therefore, in essence, the children would miss out nine days of, you know, inst instructional days, 300 minutes a day. But to show to the board that we were very serious about this, and we demonstrated this by, and I'm glad that's why I wanted to hear about the equivalence, you're keeping your 180 days as your floor, but your equivalent in terms of instructional minutes then can vary. So, I mean, just to give you an idea is that when you calculate, of course, 300 minutes with 180 school days, our children would have 54,000 minutes of instructional minutes per year. And then if you take, of course, nine days out of that 180 days, it's 2,700 minutes. It's easier to do this by minutes, not by days, because it confuses a lot of people. By then adding, and this is gonna throw a can of worms in here, and I'm telling you this now publicly, because I know, because, and you can blame me for this, because this is what I did. I extended our school day by one hour. Mr. Malay's smiling because he knows that. The middle schools, all your middle schools, have been extended by one hour because of what we were doing to make up for that time. So we made up, we lost 2,700 minutes. Our school children made up 10,800 minutes by going the additional hour per day. And I did that for five years. Then after that, we were hit by earthquake and a typhoon. And at that time, the superintendent, the director at that time was Dr. Kitigua. And we lost 10 school days. And he wanted to know, how can we make it up? And remember, it was only one school at seven hours a day, F. B. Grove Middle School. All the others were still at six. And I suggested that to make up for those 10 days was to extend each day by one hour. So all of the middle schools. And I only did it for middle because that was, that was only mine. I, I had no say so for the elementary and the high schools. So we did that and we made up for all of that time. And that's why I like the idea and I'm, you know, of, of equivalency. And I wanted you to hear this because then I want you to know that when you do this and you do your calculation by the minutes, that you very well could make it up, you know, without, like you say, having then to either extend the school year or to take other holidays out of you know the uh, the calendar because ultimately um, our students would gain i don't agree however with the idea that uh, that at the end of the school year because grades have been submitted that we might as well not even have the kids come to school that uh, that has been a thorn on my side where then when we say instructional minutes that's instructional minutes to the very last day that you should be teaching turn in your grades after the 180 days not before that and no celebration before the 180 days either 
I'm sorry. That's where I'm so, I said, I'm, I'm very old fashioned about because to me, instructional days, instructional minutes are very important. And when you compare the U.S. schools with other non-U.S. schools in the country, their days are longer. Their school days are longer. And their test scores are higher than us. And, you know, you just have to ask yourself that, you know, question as to then are we going to be shortchanging our students because, just because, you know, the grades have been in already and it's the end of the school year and kids, you know, are not going to be listening, you know, all of that. I mean, you know, that's because we've trained them to, to operate that way. So I really am telling this you to the board in particular, superintendent, I know we're not going to, we're going to lose you, Rob, but, you know, we got to really take, you know, the, the uh, times very seriously and hold everybody's feet to the fire because it's ultimately our school children who are losing. And, you know, so, but, but anyway, thank you uh, very much for, you know, what you've, uh, you know, provide it to improve this. And I, you know, I, you're right. Flexibility is important for you to, you know, to have to make some of these decisions and please use that time, you know, wisely when you do. And at the same time, of course, not cost the government more money again, because we have to start later. We have to end early. Thank you. Madam, I mean, our superintendent, would you? Just, uh, just want to, just to underscore that. The, when, when I, before we, well, before we came back here, but also as we were dealing with Typhoon Dolphin, I did say to my lawyers, look at this over again. Because as a, as a trained lawyer myself, sometimes you find loopholes. If you did, you never, I said, I just need to know before we finally finalize the makeup days. Is there any looseness in the law that will allow the board or myself to just end the school year and say, look, this is it? And they said, no, 180 days is pretty clear. So 180 days. So the flexibility of the time equivalence that does give us the opportunity to be creative and be practical in, uh, in everything, set the floor, but also be able to have some ability to maneuver. Uh, and so I, and then, on, then on a brief aside, since all of you are doing that, I do want to, I, we did invite Mr. Malay here, not just to provide his input, but we know that New Hampshire has a lot of snow days. And it's very important to know that when he goes over there, he's going to have the same issues about makeup days. <laughs> so I want to make sure he practiced before he went. <laughs> We've trained him. We've trained. But and, oh, may yeah. I just, I'm sorry. And, and like, like, you know, the others, uh, if I may, uh, I'd like to, of course, veer off uh, the, the bill. But yes, I want to also extend, uh, you know, of course, congratulations to Mr. Malay, you know, for your promotion. Uh, but of course, you know, we're sorry and sad to, to, you know, have you leave. Um, Mr. Malay got his first job at my school. So I, we, he and I go, you know, a long way as a, a teacher at my school and worked with him as a school principal. And Mr. Um, Fernandez, I'd like to know is that if there was anyone that I needed to call at the time when I need, couldn't get, rid, uh, get in touch with you, it was always Mr. Malay. And he's been very uh, responsive and yeah. very timely at that. So, you know, I just wanted to, to let you know that. Even though I wasn't able to, they weren't able to reach me at the time to speak to me, uh, you know, to verify your employment and to testify on your character. But, you know, publicly, I, I want to thank you. Okay. Senator Ann. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, just one question that I have is that, does this in include like other holidays? I mean, we, we take away the Easter break and the and the uh, Christmas break, but are we looking at other holidays to to look at make as a makeup for school day? Like, uh, uh, no. Yeah. We're we're really not looking at the other holidays because okay. it's, it's locked in on our calendar. Well, can I just clarify, yeah. Senator? That's, yeah, a, good, that's a good only. point, Senator Adder raised, but I think you can't touch the other holidays because they're set by law. Okay. No. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay, that's good to know. That's all. That's the only question I have. But also, again, Mr. Malay, thank you for, for your service to the Guam Department of Education. Uh, I know you have many years of... Uh, uh, good fun here, and uh, you know we're sad to see you go. But if you need any uh, cold winter clothing, come check me. I have a lot that you can have, you know. And you can leave me all your island shirts. All right. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, uh, Senator Adams. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. And uh, Senator Rob, for your 
Center of Spicio, um, I do want to thank all of you. You know, this is an example of how we can resolve an issue together, and I appreciate uh, Center of Spicio's effort to work with the board during the work session because he did get quite a bit of heat. Um, I was off island at the time for uh, medical reasons, but um, he was really raked over both of us, raked over the coast, but more so him because he was here feeling it. And the idea of um, addressing the issues that were problematic and then working with the board and the superintendent, this is really an example of how um, uh, we can resolve issues on behalf of our students. So uh, I thank you very much for working with us and uh, really helping us to understand and to um, make it work really on behalf of not only our, our students, but our, our teachers and our administrators. Mm -hmm. Senator Underwood, I had said it earlier, and I'll just close it with this. To each of you, Senator uh, Underwood, as the chairperson for this committee, Senator Rispicio as the sponsor and majority leader. Speaker Wampat as the head of this legislature. And Senator Tony Ada as minority leader. I'm asking all four of you to please expedite this so we can move forward quickly with the committee so we will have a set calendar long before the school begins. With that, may we all thank you for your cooperation. Thank you very much, Sidious Masi, for your presence and public testimony. Um, and so the public hearing is now adjourned. The time is now uh, 3.19 p.m. Thank you. Thank you.